Hi everyone, my name is Tristan from the CPAPstore.ca. Today we're going to be looking at the ResMed Air Curve 11. It looks very similar to the ResMed Air Sense 11, other than it being a white top versus a black top. But this is an air curve device, meaning it is a bi-level device or BPAP device. We're going to be talking about the slight differences between this and the old one, as well as the difference between these two machines here. And we're going to look at the settings on this guy here. Okay, there are a few small changes from this air curve device versus the air curve 10 from the previous generation. But again, they are medical devices. They're not going to change drastically. Uh, most of the changes are aesthetic in terms of the look. The old one looked like this. This one is a tiny bit sleeker, a little, a little bit uh, smaller, I think, um, but very, very similar. It's not going to be something that I really want to go into because it's mainly just aesthetic slash marketing issues. It's not really going to affect your day-to-day -day therapy. What is going to affect your therapy is the internals of this device are a little bit different. It's a little bit more efficient than the old motor, meaning it's a little bit quieter and also takes a little bit less power. And I'm going to have a CPAP kind of power video coming out soon. Uh, but in terms of watt hours, it's drawing just a little bit less. I think around 10 centimeters of pressure, you're looking at maybe a difference of one uh, watt hour difference between the new models and the old AirSense 10 and the AirSense 11, which is not a lot. You're never going to notice that on your electricity bill or anything like that. However, if you are camping and you're using a bigger battery pack like that and you plan to camp for three, four days, one watt hour difference in terms of draw is quite a bit different. That could be eight to 10 watt hours a night. Um, and for a camping duration, if it's a couple nights, that could easily be 20 watt hours, right? So uh, if that is your concern, the newer model is a little bit more power efficient. The last changes are mainly just software. So the new versions can update over the air and they also have some small features. For example, uh, it checks the motor health every night uh, when it's running the machine. So it'll send you a warning when the motor is gonna die. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the differences between an AirSense 11 and an AirCurve 11. So the AirSense 11 is an CPAP device or an APAP device. The APAP version of this device can, you can adjust uh, basically how much pressure you want uh, in the machine, but it can also automatically adjust on its own, depending on how you set it. Uh, there's an elite model of this device, which sounds elite, but it's actually not elite. It's, the elite model is actually just the CPAP or fixed pressure device. So the elite is gonna have kind of your cheapest option with the least features. You can just have one constant pressure, whereas your auto set option, uh, your APAP mode option, you can have a CPAP mode or an APAP mode, um, and you can have some flow and pressure variations. The air curve though is a bi-pressure device or a bi-level or BPAP device, meaning it has two pressures that are constantly fluctuating throughout the night. So this guy here might be automatically set to a pressure of 15 and you're using a 15 throughout the night. Whereas the air curve is gonna have an EPAP, an exhale pressure and an IPAP, an inhale pressure. And those are gonna be two pressures that are constantly fluctuating. And because of that, it's used for a different set of clientele, people with different respiratory issues, um, COPD or complex sleep apnea versus just a more standard, typical obstructive sleep apnea. Because of that, the bi-pressure device is a lot more complicated. You're gonna to wanna to talk to your doctor or sleep therapist before you change the settings in it yourself. However, it wouldn't be a CPAP store video without me showing you everything you need to know about the machine. So let's get cracking. Okay, we're gonna to go to the clinical menu here. We're gonna click settings. Now in mode, we have CPAP mode here. We have S mode and V auto. The CPAP mode is again, CPAP mode. You don't really wanna click this unless you need it, but you might as well probably just buy an AirSense 11 at that point. The S mode is a fixed pressure bi-level mode and the V auto is the automatic bi-pressure mode. So we're gonna click S first. So as you can see, we have our IPAP pressure and our EPAP pressure. Our IPAP pressure here is set to 15, which is you're inhaling at a pressure of 15 and your EPAP pressure is set as at 10. So um, you're exhaling at a pressure of 10. Now we can change this to whatever we want. So for example, if we want to have a crazy thing, we could have a pressure of 25 here and we could exhale at a pressure of three, which would be your widest variance. There's no probably person who's ever really gonna need this hardcore of a variance, but it is there if you want it. Most people are gonna have a pressure difference of like four to six type of thing. So if we're gonna swipe up here, for example, your pressure might be a 14 on your inhale and your exhale pressure would be some somewhere around like maybe an eight or something like that. Now, if you have a pressure that's say close together, 
For example, say you have an IPAP pressure of 14 and an EPAP pressure of 12. So a two difference that is very similar to just the pressure relief settings on an AirSense 11 CPAP machine under the setting EPR, where you can have a pressure variation of zero, one, two, and three. So because this is less than three, this would be very comparable to what you can get on a CPAP machine, okay? But the difference here is you can actually have a way bigger variance if you do want it. Now under mode, we're gonna click that again, and now we're gonna look at the V auto. So I'm gonna click V auto, and there we go. So your max inhalation pressure is 25 here, and your minimum exhalation pressure is five. So that means that it's gonna be somewhere in that range, your in, your in pressure and your out pressure, uh, but it can get up to 25. So here we can change that. For example, you want a max pressure of 20. And for example, say we want a min pressure of 10 or 10, there you go. So say that's what you want, a 10 and 20 for your IPAP and your EPAP, there you go, whatever your doctor says. But here we have your PS and your PS is your pressure support. And that's gonna be the difference between the two. So I can change this, for example, to one to five. So let's say a pressure of five for simplicity. And what this means under these settings here is that your max eye pressure is 20 and your max EPAP pressure is 10. And your PS, your pressure support is five. So under these settings here, you have a max IPAP of 20. So say you're sleeping throughout the night, your machine thinks that you would need a 17 for your IPAP pressure. That would be the best for that current situation. Well, if your IPAP pressure is 17, then your EPAP pressure is going to be 12 because we have a pressure support of five. Now let's say things change throughout the night. Your machine is now recommending you a pressure of 20, which happens to be your max. Your EPAP pressure in that case would now be 15 because 20 minus five is 15, okay? So the next is the TI range, which is basically the time interval of the IPAP phase. So if we click it here, we can see we go zero, one, two, three, four seconds. Um, if we do one, we can change a point form. So like 1.2 seconds, for example, to 3.9, something like that. And there we have our time interval. So basically that right there is how long or the minimum and the maximum time you're gonna have for the inhalation IPAP phase. Therefore, in this example, the longest amount of time you're gonna have that IPAP pressure is gonna be 3.9 seconds. Your trigger is when the machine is going to change from exhale to inhale. Uh, so you can change the sensitivity of that from very low, medium, high, very high. Most people have it at medium. And then your cycle is when your machine is going to change from your inhale to your exhale. Again, you can change that sensitivity and talk to your doctor about that. Most people have it at medium. So now we can look at the comfort settings. We have ramp time. So this is the amount of time it takes your BiPAP to spool up to the pressure that you're gonna be having throughout the night. So for example, if you have a pressure of 10 and 20 uh, and, and put it at 10 minutes, it's gonna take 10 minutes before it goes to that. Just offering a little more comfort as you're falling asleep. And here we have your starting EPAP pressure. We have it at four all the way to 10 because 10 is set to our maximum here. So our minimum here. So we have a minimum EPAP pressure of 10. So if we change this to four, for example, then it basically has no choice other than to start at four, okay? So that's your starting EPAP. Humidity level is just how much humidity you want in your machine. There's just a level from off to eight. And then mask settings, you can change the type of mask you have. So this works the most efficiently as possible. We have tube, slimline, standard, and 3M. And then we have a BV filter, which is your bacteria or viral filter. You can turn it on if you have one and off if you do not have one. Uh, they just filter more bacteria and it basically goes in line with your tube. If you have one or your doctor gives you one, it's gonna go on the back of your machine here and it's gonna plug into your tube so you'll see it. So just make sure you turn that off or on if you do have one because um, otherwise your machine won't really know how to calculate the correct pressure. Uh, patient view, we have advanced and simple. Right now we have advanced. That's just gonna give you a little more access to some settings. Um, some people have it at simple, but I prefer advanced because most people know kind of what they're doing here. Smart start and smart stop. So smart start is if you put your mask on and you breathe into your mask, it's gonna automatically start uh, going right away. And your smart stop is if it recognizes that you take off the mask, then it's gonna stop the machine. I recommend having the smart stop off, um, both in BiPAP machines and CPAP machines, just because 
it's an extra layer of being finicky, I guess you could say. And if you stop breathing throughout the night for an extended period of time or something just glitches out with your mask, we don't want it to accidentally stop. Uh, so you have a high leak and it thinks that you took off your mask, whatever. Most of the time it's okay, but generally I think it's just safer and easier if you just have the smart stop off because sometimes it could mess up and just stop and it would be kind of annoying. Okay, we have the care check-in, so it'll just send updates uh, for care. Oh, and now my, I haven't figured out this part yet. I'm sorry, I'm able to make a video on why the screen goes to sleep mode. I think I just had the screen on too long without touching it. A few moments later. There, it goes brighter. I don't know what causes that, to be honest. The last thing is reminders. So you can have, for example, a mask reminder and it'll remind you when you've had that mask for, let's say, three months so you can replace it, okay? And that's about it for the machine. We have some language and stuff like that, but most things you probably won't need to touch. Um, and we're gonna take that out and exit, there we go, and boom, we are back to our home. And now we can see that our settings are saved. For example, our ramp time is now 10 minutes. We changed that. Um, I don't know if we change anything else, but we have these off. And because we have the advanced uh, patient view mode, we can change this here. But if we did had the simple mode on, that would disappear. I hope this video was useful. Please consider subscribing.